We've done a thousand years in Europe and a thousand years in Asia. Today we're doing a thousand years in North America. So first off, we're going to go to the world laws and we're going to leave almost everything on. But I am going to enable the 100 people modifier and the angry villagers modifier. And what these do is the uh, 100 people modifier just limits uh, the settlements to 100 population. So they'll kind of be forced to like expand uh, pretty quickly. And then the angry villagers world law just makes it so the citizens will also participate um, in the wars. So it just makes the civilizations like a little bit harder to uh, get conquered. So first off, let's just drop some humans in the ocean and, and just make them swim for shore. Uh, so maybe we'll drop some down there maybe a couple up here see where they go and then a couple down here somewhere oh why is this guy so slow i spawned them like literally in the same spot but this person is just like incredibly slow all right he's almost made it and oh he's going straight for florida out of all these options you pick florida really all right we got a few empires that just got established uh that florida empire is called the godly um then we got peru of moon um, down in like California and then these two landed in Quebec um, So they are the Onisab Imperium, so I think we got a good even spread. It's a bummer. Nobody I guess I was kind of hoping these two people would go up to like Alaska area and we kind of fill this area up But I guess it'll be kind of cool to see like who ends up getting uh, like all this area Alaska and like all these uh Canadian provinces and they're starting to increase in population. They all have have elected kings, which are probably just the two people that founded the colony. They're just like the rulers of it. Oh, and there's the little guy. Ah, he's so sweet and innocent. But that will soon change. All right, let's go ahead and speed this up a little bit. Um, we're in year five, but we have a lot of years to go. I'm I'll probably end up like kind of skipping around to big like benchmark years. God, all these already building some kind of dock or something. Though I think they build docks like way too early. I don't think they're gonna get fishing boats for a while, but uh, they do have docks. And then Pair of Moon is up to six population. Who is their king? King Ami. And this guy's taking some damage already. I'm not sure like by what, but I don't know. Maybe this, I think this biome does spawn snakes occasionally. So that must be it. Um, unless he was just dying of starvation, but I think most of them are, I think they're pretty good on food Also, I love how their slogan is forged by depression makes sense. They live in California. Okay, just reached year 25 We have an alliance that just got formed between um, Peru and the Godly. so I'm curious. I wonder if they're just gearing up to go destroy a uh, Onisab and empires are starting to expand a little bit um, into some new colonies. We got Yasap B from Peru and then Yabakona from the Godly and Tova from um, Onisab. So Onisab starting to move out of this area. Paru is moving up kind of northwest or northeast um, into Nevada, I think this would be. And oh, they're up to houses already too. That's cool. So house tier, that looks like house tier two, I think. Let's go ahead and take a look at the cultures. So Clomarab is Paru and they've got house tier two and windmills so they can start uh, producing some food and then Woyan, that is this up here they have about the same except that they do have swords they probably expedited the development on that just because everyone wants to kill them then jdab is oh i guess they have the same house are two and swords and year 45 we just got our first war uh paro just declared war on onisab and godly's got like four army in here so onisab's down to two last colonies left and yeah see this is what angry villagers does where all the citizens like come out to try and help though let's be honest they're not like super effective all right that colony's down and Onisab did manage to reclaim this one but their other colony down here from the godly just got taken no and they're retreating. Did the war just end? No, I guess they're just like retreating for no reason. All right, you got some more armies heading up into Onisab. Uh, they do have 17 army in here, but I really don't think it's gonna be enough. Yep, first eight is coming up to try and attack their army and I think they're just gonna get destroyed. Uh, but Paru is just now arriving with their army and they're just going straight for the capital. Or maybe it's just one guy. Is it just that one guy? Where's everyone else? Uh, why are you guys taking so long? All right, I guess the war just kind of ended out of nowhere. So Onisab lives to fight another day. Um, we just entered into the Age of Sun at year 55. And then I guess the alliance between Paru and the Godly just got dissolved. And then Paru just decided to go to war with Onisab just by themselves. Uh, so we'll see if they actually like follow through with it. Um, they definitely do outnumber Onisab, but I think they're having some troubles with the fires over here from the age of uh, sun. Seems like it, this like heat wave spawned a ton of guys. I don't think it usually spawns this many, uh, or maybe it's just cause this fire is so big, but they might actually be in trouble because their civilization is like starting to just get lit on fire. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Um, Onisab's got a little fire in here, but 
I don't think it's doing too much damage. Oh man, yeah, just look at that fire spread. Is it just gonna burn down their entire base? Oh, actually the desert kind of saved them because it can't go any farther than the desert. But a lot of their base is just a wasteland now. Uh, like their entire colony here just got burnt down. All right, year 100, looks like Paru and Onisab are pretty evenly matched now. That fire really like nerfed Paru so much. And we just entered into the age of ice. So everything's kind of freezing over. Um, I just kind of enabled the four that were kind of like the seasons. Uh, so we have like kind of like spring, summer, uh, fall, and winter. But I imagine that'll kill off all the fire creatures. I don't think I see any of them anymore. Uh, so that's good at least, but I think now it's just gonna spawn ice creatures that freeze everyone, uh, which could be worse. And then I guess that war did end between Paro and Onisab, so they're friends again, but one just started between Paro and the Godly. I think uh, it's crazy because the Godly has been like behind most of this game, but I think after all the fires and everything, they're actually doing a lot better than Paru. So that it's very likely they'll actually be able to conquer them. Um, they got one colony, I, they're going for the second one. What is lighting everyone on fire? Oh, there's a fire wizard just in the middle right here. He's like lighting the snow on fire. It doesn't make any sense, but it would be kind of cool if someone killed him because they'll get a fire staff from that. But I don't know if that's gonna happen. Okay, year 130, we just had two things happen. Um, Paro just conquered one of the Godly's colonies. So Paro's up to 312, Godly's down to 284, and then Onisab actually just had a huge rebellion, uh, the Fokesh, and they stole a ton of Onisab's army. So you can see two 30s, one over here, one over here, and then a 16. I think this could be the end of Onisab. Yeah, this colony over here in now Newfoundland um, just got conquered and they just have two colonies over here. And then down here, Godly is pulling ahead in the fight. That was so quick. I guess the season's over. Uh, Age of Ice is over. We're back to Age of Sun again. Um, I wish there was a way that we could make it not random so they would just go in order, but I guess we'll just kind of have to deal with it. We haven't gotten um, Age of Tears yet, the like rainy one. Man, poor Paru. They, they can't stand another Age of Sun. And then I guess Onisab just got conquered by the Fokesh, and Paru and Godly are allies again. Year 170, the heat waves are just killing everyone right now. Yeah, like the Godly's lost pretty much their entire colony over here. And then Paru lost this colony again. Um, they still have some wildfires that are getting put out, and Fokesh has had a few, but they're not too bad. You can see some of like the carnage from some of these, but they have they definitely haven't had it as bad as some of the other empires. And you got Paru actually moving pretty deep into Canada. Year 200. So Paru continues to move up north, claiming more land and the Fokesh as well. Build a colony way up there. I don't think anyone actually lives like up on these islands up here. Uh, but Godly just got a rebellion, Holy Unu. Oh crap, are they gonna get another rebellion? And Paru and Godly are allied. So they're both kind of attacking this alliance. This alliance is not going to last very long though, uh, given that they only have 300 population and they're going against like an empire that has like 900. I mean, just look at like the ridiculous amount of army Paru has and they're sending down. Oh no. Fokesh just declared war on the Godly 2. So I wonder if how that's gonna go. I mean, they have enough population to potentially conquer both of them. Uh, let's see how this war is going on down here. You got Paru sending up some troops. Oh, this guy got the fire staff. That's what I was wondering where all these fires are coming from. Yeah, look at this guy. He's just absolutely roasting everyone. Well, I'm happy that he's on uh, Paru's side. They definitely need guys like him. Um, Fokesh did just get a rebellion though, which could turn the tide of this war. So now they're at war with um, pretty much the entire world. And I guess we should take a look at what the wars actually look like, because there's a lot going on. We got um, Godly and Paru against Holy Unu, which is that little rebellion. And then Clash of Broken Worlds, that is the Fokesh versus Godly and the Paru of Moon. And then we also got Fokesh against their new rebellion, Tess. And then year 218, Paru and Godly ended their wars. So Godly's no longer at war with Holy Unu, but they are still at war with the Fokesh. And then Paru is not at war with Unu as well. And they might actually be making a treaty with the Fokesh. And yep, that treaty just went through. So everyone's at peace right now, uh, except for the Fokesh and their new rebellion right here, which uh, is probably gonna die pretty quick. But Fokesh, once again, is trying to go after that alliance uh, between Paru and 
uh, Godali. Year 250, um, Paru and the Godali made a treaty with the Fokesh, but the Fokesh did lose a ton of colonies in that war. Like all of these colonies on the east side of Canada were all under the Fokesh's control, and now uh, Paru has all of them. And year 300. So the entirety of Alaska has been filled up. Um, Holy Unu and the Fokesh actually kind of like flanked around and claimed some colonies up here in like northern Alaska and, and uh, Canada. And then you got Godali got some land over here and uh, Paru of Moon is kind of like spread out a little bit in this area. So the entire map is pretty much filled up except for like this tiny little strip of land in like Baja, California. But besides that and this like little piece of land here, it looks like the entire map is filled up. All right, I assume the cultures are all leveled up to max now, but I wanna take a look at them. Um, so they're not max yet. They're getting close though. We'll see what, so Clomorab is like Paru and kind of the godly a little bit. See, they're level 36. Um, they have all of the different weapons. They got house tier four, no better materials yet. Um, which is surprising, but they do have a lot of rare knowledges as well. P. Then let's see what Wuyan looks like. Looks similar. Um, no new materials though, surprisingly, but they do have house tier six. So they're doing that better than the other culture. And then JDAB, which is kind of in the bottom right. So that should be like Godly and um, Unu down here in, in this area. Oh, they're up to silver. Uh, that's kind of funny. They don't have ranged weapons yet or anything besides hammers and swords, but they have silver. I, I don't know what's better, honestly. Is it better to have like really strong melee damage and not really any ranged attacks or like kind of average of both? Uh, I'm not really sure. Yeah, you can see like a lot of them have like iron and silver swords here. So they're pretty OP. Year 350, Par of Moon is now up to 2000 population. The Godly is up to 1100. Holy Unu up to seven or 676 and the Fokesh up to a thousand. Even still, this tiny little bit of land in the middle of everyone has yet to be claimed. It's funny how all the empires like are just refusing to even step foot on this like little plot of land. Like it's like cursed or something. Um, surprisingly, we have not had any wars in the past like 50 years. No wars and no rebellions. It's been like weirdly peaceful, which is really surprising, but I feel like we're gonna get some wars pretty soon, um, especially because there's not like that much land to go around. Yeah, like the entire, like again, the entire map is filled up. So it, in order to get more land for any of these empires, they're pretty much just gonna have to go to war with each other. There's, uh, there's no other way. Um, and as far as alliances go, we still have the League of People, which is between Paru and the Godali. Um, Holy Unu and the Fokesh are still not in an alliance. I wanna take a look at what the armies look like right now for Paru. I don't know if they've made it past wood. Actually, I think they have. I'm seeing some guys with iron. I'm seeing some armor here. So that's good. I don't see anything past iron. I don't see any silver or like mithril, but I bet some of the em other empires have better stuff. That looks like iron over there. I think it was Fokesh that had um, like the most advanced weapon. So I wanna see if we can see some good stuff. Um, no, mostly stone, surprisingly. It must be JDAB that has the really good technology. Yeah, they're up to level 50. So actually coming up on max level and they do have silver. So what Holy Unu lacks in like population, they kind of make up for with uh, like how good their armies are. Oh man, all of the rebellions like waited till now to pop up year 360. Look at this, this is insane. Most of these probably won't survive though. Like Realm of the Hegapu, uh, they're not gonna survive. Great Yin, looks like they're about to get destroyed. Yeah, Im's about to get captured. Realm of the Lichesy doesn't look too bad. They got about 330. Um, and Paro's having to deal with all these other rebellions right now. So, I mean, maybe, I, I hope they survive. And we got another one, big surprise, Itchul. Uh, with 400 population. Oh crap, Paru's down to like 400? Well, they really did lose so much of their population with all that. I wanna see, I wanna look at the wars and see how many are going against Paru. Yeah, it looks like Paru's got like five rebellions going against them right now. Um, thankfully, they do have uh, Godly still as their uh, ally, but they're going against Great Yin, Ichul, Hegapu, Lichesy and to Tosice. Um, then you also got Fokesh, I guess, is went to war with Holy Unu. So they might get eliminated, actually. And then Fokesh is going 
against a great ope. Uh, so that's one of their rebellions. And that's this like super oh. tiny one up here. And oh crap, Paru is down to one last colony. They're trying to make an alliance, I think, right now. But if they can't get this done in time, I think they might actually get eliminated. Uh, it looks like it went through. But I think they only made peace with one rebellion. So that was great yin. And then they're still, they still have to make peace with Itchul and crap, like all of them. <laughs> uh, Toysi, Itchul, and uh, Lichesy. But I think this is going to go through. And yep, okay, it went through. That war is over. We're also in year 375. So now it's just Fokesh versus Great Ope. I think is the only war going on right now. All right, let's go and fast forward again. I think we just got a pretty big alliance. See who's part of that our coalition okay it's not even that big hegapu and great yin oh this is the big one though league of people so that is between tosais itchul paru and the godly so that's a really big alliance with 1400 population almost 1500 also great ope just got destroyed but I think we all saw that coming. Okay, year 390, a bunch of stuff just happened. So it looks like the entirety of League of People and our coalition is are all going against uh, the Fokesh. Yeah, like literally everybody is here. It's just a big like slaughter party. Um, I am happy to see Itchul seems to be getting a lot of land out of this though because they're one of the smaller empires. Fokesh down to 600 and about to lose couple more colonies just lost them i think they're down to like four colonies now they're somehow reclaiming this one i don't know how all right just two colonies left and both of them are coming under capture okay we just reached year 400 they're down to one last colony and i think it's getting captured by who is this great yun oh great yun they've claimed a lot they were one of like the really small um rebellions um but they've actually like made a such a big push I want to see how much they have. They have 828. It's nice to see the playing field is starting to get kind of uh, evened out a little bit. We don't really have like a world power right now. We have Great Yun, which is one of the biggest empires. Then we have Itchul and the Godly. And I guess Toy, Toy Size is up there, but not quite as powerful as the other ones. Year 425, we're back to war again. Um, our coalition went to war with League of People. There also was a rebellion the tea bad there's a lot of treaties kind of been being thrown around bad war of holy unu just ended in freedom of tea bad tea bad's not at war with anyone but we still have these two alliances going to war with each other although what's funny is league of people is doing so much better than oak our coalition but i think all these fires that have been starting um and our coalition like gaining more land has made League of People actually like weaker now um, because they're down to like 1300 and our coalition is up to um, like 1650. All right, year 450, we got League of People at 900 population, our coalition at 2100. And our coalition has claimed a lot of like the USA. They've got like Washington, California, um, Oregon, Montana, Nevada, um, and then whatever else is over here. Yeah, League of People is just kind of getting pushed into Mexico. And they just got Florida. So that's out. Isn't that where Godly started, Florida? And then they kind of moved over here. Whoa, Paru and Itchul. I was not even thinking about that. They both just got destroyed. Man, that's so sad. So Godly's the only like OG empire left. Yeah, Great Yin, they definitely need some rebellions to happen. They've become way too powerful. And year 460, Godly's down to just a few uh, colonies left. They're kind of just making their last stand here. And and Yun did get a rebellion, but it's not very big. But they might be getting another one, and they might also be making a treaty with someone. I hope it's the Godly. I don't think it is, though. No, rip. Uh, Godly's gone. Year 475, Yun has gotten several rebellions. Um, Itaibu, Realm of the Iwo, and Fukai. I think Great Yun is kind of winning in this fight. Uh, Fai Kai is kind of on their last legs. Iwo's not doing too well with just two colonies left. And Yit um, is also not doing super well. Uh, oh, wait. Did the war just end? Yeah, I guess it just ended. Uh, well, that's good. I think the only war going on right now is between Lichesy and Itaibu. Oh, actually, they might be making peace with them. That would be good. Year 500. So far, we've had almost 40,000 deaths. Um, world population is up to 4,000, and we're back into the Age of Ice as well. There haven't been any wars recently, but it looks like there are a few on the horizon. 